Welcome to the Money Over 50 podcast, brought to you by Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue from Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation, or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. Welcome to Money Over 50. Today's episode, very special number 200 episode. Michael, what are your thoughts? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of our listeners because um, uh, we've received tremendous support. Yeah. We had uh, two listeners when we when – we, <laughs> and one of them was lying. It was my mother and – actually, both of them were lying. We had two listeners when we first started back in 2019. Uh, yeah. One was my mother. Yeah. And one was your mother, yep. and then we found out they were both lying. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't in fact listening. We, we at all. should have but in those first couple of episodes. We should have put like a little bit of a a, a, a test in there and said the, the the magic number is forty two. If you if you're listening to this, repeat the number forty two to me. <laughs> yeah. And we would have got our yeah, mothers going. Yes, it's great. Yeah, fantastic. Well done. Yeah, and, uh, and saying nothing about the number forty two, we would have known. So. Uh, yeah. So so first of all, um, like to thank the listeners we've we've been really enjoyed doing the podcast and it's certainly not over um uh we've 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 enjoyed it immensely to date um we actually looked at it dallas i remember and said how many how how few listeners would we need to keep doing it yeah and we we come up with a baseline of of one listener yeah um we've got many 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 more than that um the numbers continue to grow all the time and and yeah no first of all first of all uh I'd certainly like to say thanks to the listeners and 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 um and uh with with the numbers growing all the time we we know that people are getting yeah some good value out of the, yep. out of the money over 50 podcast so yeah. we and that's, we, that's we love doing it yeah and and as you say yeah, thanks to, to everyone who has actually the the feedback is really because we look at the we often look at the numbers and go oh yeah we've had you know this many thousand downloads a month and you and you sort of go oh yeah that's a lot of people listening but until you get an email from a from a listener or you get someone who you know books in for a meeting or sends an email just to just to say what they think you know or leaves a comment or something like that it's sort of hard to it doesn't seem tangible until you actually have that interaction with with the listeners so yeah. thank you to to everyone who has uh, listened and, and also to everyone who's you know left a rating or a comment or sent us mm. an email or booked a meeting or you know given us their thoughts or, or anything like that we we appreciate it because it is a it's a very odd thing where we sort of just drift off from the office and, and go out into our, uh, our our podcasting recording booth sit here record podcasts and then go back to work and it sort of seems like we're just two weirdos sitting here talking to each other <laughs> which which we sort of are but. It's, it doesn't seem real that there are actually thousands of people that, that do listen to this on a regular basis. Yeah, and um, and I suppose we should let the the listeners behind the curtain there. So we we, we have quite a large office, <laughs> yes. and um, and in that office we'd we'd set it up for a boardroom, yeah. and uh, and and we had this big space for a boardroom, but we're not boardroom people. type of people. Yeah. So the boardroom. Now had half of the boardroom is a gym, and um, and the other half has a it's like a teepee. You know, <laughs> the it's, podcast it's, teepee. it's a, a podcast teepee if you yeah. think of it like that with, with um, moving blankets as, with as blankets all over it. it. Yeah, and yeah. the blankets uh, to to muffle the noise and to, to yeah. get better sound quality in yeah. inside of that. Yeah. Um, Dallas and I sit. Uh, we have a a table in there. We've got um, uh, all sorts of all sorts of technical looking equipment <laughs> with knobs and buttons and things like that that I don't understand how any of it works. No, uh, half the time I don't boom either. Boom arms <laughs> and microphones and, and things like that. So um yeah. So we're yeah, we're well and truly comfortably it's, set up in here. It's it's been an interesting one though. Like we were just talking about this having a coffee before we started recording about um I guess it's it's a, it sounds a bit um a bit silly, but like lessons learnt or, or um it's it's a good example to me of so when we started you know we're talking about all the technical equipment all the rest of it when we started and and anyone who's listened since the very beginning will will hear the difference in the sound quality to me it's a good example of the compounding effect of of anything and we you know we talk about this with our clients all the time the compounding effect of 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 any action taken regularly and and the right action at the right time is you know 
you can't you can't record your first episode and go, well, we want you know thousands of downloads a month, and we want this, and we want clients to come to us from the podcast, and we want blah blah blah. You basically, you know, those first episodes, we, we sat there with very ordinary sound quality recording, mm. and we stumbled our way through, and there was a fair bit of swearing at different times where I accidentally deleted things and had to re-record and all these sorts of things. And so, but over time, over, over two hundred repetitions of anything, if if you just focus on trying to get slightly better all the time mm. and and i think that's what we've tried to do um is is to get better at you know the sound quality and at the technical part of it and it also getting a better understanding from from our feedback from listeners of what sort of topics are interesting to different people and what uh, directions we might be able to go in the future that that uh, that people will get value out of you don't necessarily have to make any huge adjustments at any point in time it wasn't like we we you know, we sat down and recorded our first episode and, and then we jumped to a booth with, you know, boom arms and, you know, all the rest of it and a mixer and a this and a that and, you know, different software. And it's just gradually over time, just improving things, dialing it in and just keeping everything heading in the right direction. I think there's a similarity there with most people's financial planning where I think people approach it and it's probably a bit of a tortured analogy here, but they spent 30 years maybe not doing quite the right thing in a lot of cases mm. and, and people are a bit scared to sort of rip the band-aid off and go well i'm going to have to you know change everything that i'm doing and, and stop doing everything that i like doing and 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 just focus on retirement planning and getting set up for retirement and i have to be a completely different person and that's we've talked about this before it's even if you could get people to do that it's not a sustainable way to to do anything Mm -hmm. and so the approach that we've taken with the podcast is similar to the approach that that i think that we like to take with with our financial planning with our clients which is what's what's the sustainable easy path to just you know pick up those little bits of a difference everywhere along the way get things slightly better moving in the right direction over time and let and let time and compounding do a lot of the work for, for for our clients so um like i say it's probably a bit of a torture analogy but it but it is anyone who's done uh, anything over an extended period of time you know if when when you start out in your career when you're a first year apprentice or when you just leave uni you you don't know you, you know that you don't know anything you, you know and, and it's 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 a very slow process to to pick up that that knowledge and, and put it all together but over time if you listen to this and you're in your 50s it's it's a similar sort of thing that that happens that's happening in your career i guess is it's similar to what we've experienced with the podcast and and i think it's similar to what most of our clients experience with their financial planning where after five or ten years of of or even a few years of of taking their their financial planning seriously it's it's a gradual shift that's happened where they're now a completely different person and they're in a completely different situation to where they probably thought they could possibly be and there's been no great pain point along the way yeah it's a good point dallas so um just looking back episode one Downsizing your home instead of your lifestyle that aired on the fifteenth of January two thousand nineteen. Yep. Um, we were releasing on average one every fortnight. Yep. Then, so um, yeah, uh, by the time that that March two thousand and twenty rolled around, and the significance of that, of course, is that the the okay. world just learned of <laughs> of of coronavirus um, and COVID nineteen. Uh, we were only up to episode thirty six hmm. at that point in time, which was the the soup Nazi episode. <laughs> um, so, so um, uh, yeah, we had some in the bank at that point in time, and 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 but we didn't have a lot in mm. the bank, and then we ramped it up to to two per week uh, mm. during coronavirus mm. because we had plenty to talk about, of course. Yeah, um, and we found, I mean, we found that uh, quite a few listeners came to us. Yeah, during that, that time, during that yeah. period of time because of the the obvious lockdowns and things like that. So. Mm. So um, that was really good. The uh, so yeah to be to be in September of two thousand and twenty one and hitting the two hundred mark. We're yeah. we're um, we're we're happy to be here. Of course, yeah. um, we never knew if we'd run out of topics to yeah. speak about. That, yeah. But once we got going, um, we 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 found that that topics weren't a no. An issue for us, no. and uh, and 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 yeah, you know, we're 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 able to continually come up with new material that mm. um, that we think can add value to your situation. And that's that's I think I guess one of the the main takeaways for me from from this meeting for people is, is that um, 
I guess the way that we think of it with coming up with with new ideas and new things to discuss is that what started to happen as our listener number, as our, as our backlog of of episodes has built up, and as our listener base is built up, it's it's almost like pulling on a thread. You, you think you're going to come to a finite end of things mm. to talk about, but as you pull on that thread, you know more comes out. So now, more and more now, we're getting. Uh, you know, questions from from um, from listeners or from people who are saying, "Hey, I, I know you guys talked about this, but you didn't talk about this part of it." Or mm. uh, different things that you know, different experiences that we're having with uh, <laughs> in our in our in our Zoom meetings that we're that we're having with some of our listeners who, who are booking in to meet with us. Some of the experience that we're having in in those Zoom meetings that that are sort of lending themselves to to the next thing to talk about, and then mm. the next thing to talk about lends itself to the next listener question, and then. Mm. Uh, you know, as as the episodes build up and as people sort of build a relationship, we're finding that more and more people are, are reaching out and booking in that meeting, and, and that's sort of it's a bit of a, a cycle there where it all lends itself to further uh, experiences or learnings for us, and and hopefully a more valuable product and, and a more valuable experience for for people who are who are listening. Yeah, absolutely. And and the biggest change that I that I've seen um, with with our listeners over that period of time is is 2020, the year that everyone had. In Australia and around the world, um, in 2019, uh, my, my feeling is that people were generally uh, uh, more local. Yeah, when they were Absolutely. when they were looking to to get advice from a professional, yeah. uh, they would they would tend to go more local. Mm. Um, 2020 came around, and I think it was just a worldwide test where yes. people got used to uh, all across the world uh, really really quickly. They got they got comfortable with dealing with people remotely. Yeah. Um, sometimes that yeah that was obviously spurred on by uh, dealing with colleagues that they previously sat beside. Yeah. In an office, they were, they were then dealing with them, you know, via a Zoom meeting or a, or a yeah. Teams meeting or whatever it was, uh, remote meeting. So yeah. so for us, um, we now find that we we have uh, you guys, our listeners, all around Australia. Um, not only all around Australia listening to the podcast, but but all around Australia, uh, we're we we're, we're getting people that are taking us up to book the initial meeting, mm. and um, that's been the biggest change that I've seen in that yeah, in that two years. Absolutely. So so people are, are far more comfortable and dealing with and with think, someone remotely now. Yeah, you know, it, uh, it it's really via interesting because I think that, as you say, in that in that time where during COVID where we all had to learn how to zoom a lot better and more efficiently and you know, have those sorts of meetings and, and do things um, like that. It's sort of probably, um, I know for myself that it's, it's, if you're used to going and meeting with someone in person, it's sort of hard to get out of that zone. But the minute that you then go, Oh, well I can just have a zoom meeting instead. The pool of available places that, you know, even from a, you know, with, with medical professionals, yeah, I've had, I've had different Zoom meetings with you know a dietitian or a you know a geneticist and, and things like that. Where prior to prior to COVID, you basically just had to take the, the local guy who was whether yeah. he was the best or the worst or where he stacked up. It was just that's yeah. where you went. Whereas it's probably been a good for I think with with ourselves looking for other professionals, it's been a good forcing mechanism to make you go not just who's the person that, that I mm. want to talk to that is close by, but Who's actually the best person to talk to about this? And I think that's sort of, um, you know, we're probably pumping our own tires here, but I think that's what's helped for us is that, you, you know, when you when your business is called Money Over Fifty, when you've got a podcast called Money Over Fifty, and you've got two hundred episodes where you you know, talking for hours and hours and hours about all the different little tiny aspects of things and, and the bigger picture stuff and the in the weeds and the technical details and the different concepts. It's sort of an easy decision for people to make. Then, often when when we're booking in with people, is that you know, e- even people who who didn't necessarily find us via the podcast that are finding our website, that are just googling, you know, mm. retirement planning, you know, or financial planning in retirement or whatever, and they're finding our website and, and are then going to the podcast because they everyone's in the zone where you're sort of looking now for who's the best person that I can talk to about this and who's going to be the right fit for me, not just who, who's the local person. Yeah. And so. Yeah, and and it's not just us. Like, like there's a lot of other professionals that I think are finding the same thing, and I think that that will be, and, and I hope that across the industry, that's that's a thing that happens more and more. Where, you know, not just us specialising in retirement planning, but but all 
all experts should should really be focusing on on the thing that they do best and 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 just on that where i think the the days of you know, in, in our industry the financial planner we always joke about who has got written on the on the, on the billboard on the side of their building we do we do these 10 different bits yeah. of, you know, we, we do, specialize. We specialize in these 10 things. You know, it's a bit like the restaurant that says we specialize in 10 different cuisines. It's, yeah. it's probably not going to do any one of them well. So yeah. I think that that push for most consumers towards the, you know, or that willingness to work remotely with people has, has pushed a lot of professionals to be the expert in something. And I think that can only be a good thing, particularly in our, in our industry where, it can be tricky sometimes for people to go. Does this guy actually know what he's talking about, or is it just that he knows slightly more than more mm-hmm. than me? And so, hopefully, that that continues to happen, and that, and that we see people across the board in our industry and in all sorts of professions that are that are focused on just becoming the absolute best that they can be in their area, and just trying to attract the people that are the best fit for them. Yeah, look, I think I think it's only a good thing, and if 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 uh, one of my mantras in life is to take something good out of yeah. everything yeah. so even if it's a bad thing take something good out of it and for me that's the best thing to come out of the year that we had in 2020 mm-hmm. is that is that is that um people are now more willing to deal with people all over uh australia or yeah. all over the world and and they and um as you touched on there you, you you can then be a specialist in a certain niche, and you're not constrained to that geographical area. Yeah. So um, uh, I, I think the same thing out of this will come. Yeah. Um, more more narrow focused niche, uh, you know, ad- professionals mm. in in not just in financial planning, but but everything, and that can only be a good thing for yeah. that can that that can only be a good thing for the 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 end consumer. Yeah. And I think that there's, there's an interesting one. Um, I guess as well with that is that it's a push to, um, again, think from my own perspective, where when you could when you could just go places and see people very easily, you, you sort of almost didn't have to do as much research. So what what we've found now with a lot of people who are booking in with us, um, as I say, whether they found us via the podcast or whether they found us from another channel and then go back and listen to a lot of the podcast, by the time they come and meet with us sort of educated themselves in a lot of different areas it's, mm. it's it's a really interesting one where you're starting from a, a, a much higher base level of knowledge I'd say and mm. and so I think that that has been a bit of a push where if for a lot of people your first step isn't just okay well I've, I've seen this billboard with this person I'll ring them and book a meeting it's mm. it's a chance to do a bit of research and so as the as someone who is as a business where I think again our, our our duty or responsibility to to our clients and and you know, to to the public at large should be more around education probably than promotion and that's the big thing in, in our industry a lot of industries like I was saying with health professionals or whoever is that if you can arm people with their own knowledge and their own information to mm. to then um, I guess take that on board and and think about it through their own situation and then and then be able to help people work through the their own situation. It's sort of a much better dynamic than, than the, the feeling that you know you you can easily fall into as as a professional where someone comes in and it's like you're the one you're giving prescriptions that you have to do this. I think that's what I've noticed with some of the people that we're meeting with is that it it is a it's a great conversation because it's a they they've got a bit of that background they have a bit of an understanding of what you're talking about they've already given a bit of thought to how that might apply to this situation. Mm. And you're able to come in and, and, and work together on that rather than just come in and, and sort of give orders, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And and look, I hope it shines through that that we really have no expectation of, of any you know, return from putting yeah. this podcast out there. We want it to be something that we put out to the world um, with no expectation of any return. Uh, so so like, like we've always said, if we didn't, if we had one listener. And we didn't get any new clients out of out of doing this podcast. We'd still do it, um, and and that's and that's a true thing. So, um, in saying that, keep your questions coming because it's fantastic to get yeah. the the feedback, yeah. and it's fantastic to get listener questions because it really helps us um, tap into what you're thinking. Yep. Uh, and and uh, the offer's always there as well for that that one hour Zoom meeting uh, when the time is right. So when the time is right to 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 um, start to talk about 
what your goals are to arrive at you know, a proper financial plan and then and then to you know, to choose the right investments and portfolio off the back of that um, certainly book in for that one hour meeting with us and uh, and we've always said there's no cost or obligation in that so basically um, I did a meeting with with a couple uh, last week actually and uh, he was in Darwin mm. and his wife was in Sydney and I was in Townsville yeah uh, we're all zoom yeah and um, and basically out of that meeting I said uh, for you to pay us any money would be a complete waste of money mm. uh, because yeah, you can. Um, basically the, the 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 fund he was in, Per the Australian government, uh, yep. it's a spe- particular type of fund. Yep, there's not a huge amount. And we worked out make. the best thing to do. Yep. when he got to retirement, which is a couple of years' time, was to convert that to a lifetime, yep. guaranteed income stream. Mm. And uh, I said, look, for us to charge you anything, uh, that that that'd be that'd be. We don't have to do any more work from here, yep. uh, be, yeah. because yep. you, you're, it, it's, the right, it's, you're doing the yeah, right we've, thing. We've looked at these before. We've looked at what you want to do. Yep. Um, you're doing the right thing. You yep. just need to get to you. Here's what you can expect from yep. that. Um, and uh, they were really, really thankful, of course, because it just put them put their mind at ease. They yep. didn't know. They thought that was the way to go. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't quite yep. sure. So it, it is interesting. Um, often those those first meetings where sometimes you, you do a first meeting and and. Um, you're almost raising sometimes you're raising more questions than answers in that first and you sort of I'm, I'm sometimes a bit apologetic where i go <laughs> someone's come in with three questions and they've left with 10 questions because there's so many different threads that you've, you've got to then go into in more detail mm-hmm. but it is often the case and, and that's what we say that the reason we offer that meeting is that we'll know very quickly whether there is if there's something that that they need to be doing differently or if there's something mm-hmm. that they if there's something that they need to be did, doing differently do they do they need the help of an advisor or, or do they not? Do they need are they, are they able to go and do that on their own? And, and as you say, it, to me, it's it's a continuation of the same policy of putting out the podcast and putting out that out with um, no expectations or, or no uh, agenda is to go right. Well, here's information. Here's here's some knowledge that you can that you can use and work with. If you if if at the end of that first meeting, we can arm you with some more information, more knowledge, and and you're able to go and take care of that on, on your own then then that's fantastic and we feel like we've done a done a service there yeah and 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 there's there's quite a few people of course as well have booked in for that meeting and have been, ended up becoming yeah. clients because yeah. when we've had that meeting um you know we've looked at like a good half a dozen things that they that they haven't been doing which they yeah. could be taking advantage yeah. of and and have been able to bolt all of that together mm. for them as well so um Keep your listener questions coming, and if you do want to yep. to ever uh, take us up on that offer for that meeting, uh, just email us, and you can get in touch with us at podcast at mo five zero dot com dot au. And um, uh, again, from 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 me, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Money Over Fifty podcast with Money Over Fifty financial advisors. We look forward to catching up again soon.